This is Olivia, and today I'm teaching her how to code for the very first time. We're gonna talk about variables, conditionals, loops, and at the very end, test her with a classic coding problem, FizzBuzz. Let's see how she does. And just before we get into the video, I wanna thank you guys for 100,000 subscribers. It really means a lot to me, and I appreciate you guys for all the support. Let's get into coding. Have you coded before? Once, Once? in grade 10. In grade 10, and how was it? It was awful. I learned C++ and I hated it. My teacher made me cry. That's pretty mean. I know. I promise you will not cry. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna try to print something. If I type system.out.println and then within these quotes, I type, hi YouTube, and then add a semicolon at the end. If I click the green run button at the top, what do you think will happen? It'll print out hi YouTube. Let's find out. Nice. So you can see, for you, it'll probably be on the right hand side of your screen, but it should say hi YouTube. Can you see that? Yeah, it's on my, this side. This is my right. If you want to say something to the audience, feel free to put it in there. Subscribe. We can print out variables. And so variables, kind of like in math, they can be assigned to values. There are different types of variables. So what do you think will happen when we run this code? I think my name is Olivia. Let's find out. Do you want to run it? Nice. Another data type is int, which is an integer. So numbers like 1, 2, negative 12, 56. My favorite integer, for example, is my number, which is 647. So uh, what about you? What, uh, what's, your, what's your number? I, I mean favorite integer. What's your favorite integer? Oh, okay, Th that's, that's a nice integer, that's a nice integer. I will uh, copy and paste that. And there's also one more type that I forgot to mention. It's, uh, it's my type and uh, it's you. <laughs> so comments are kind of for us as humans to read and the computer just ignores it. So now we're gonna talk about getting input from a user. So in Java, we do this using something called a scanner. So using the scanner, we can input stuff into the program. If you enter in your name in the console, you will see it. You can see that it, uh, it printed out your name. So that's pretty cool. We can get input from users now using the scanner. We're gonna talk about something called conditionals. So for example, I could ask the user ideal height boyfriend, and then I can store this in a variable. Anything less than 175 centimeters, great. 180 centimeters, cool emoji. Otherwise, it'd be pretty sad. 180 centimeters. Okay, that is, uh, okay, good to know, good to know. I like editing. Videos? Yeah. That was your YouTube channel. I'm not telling you. <laughs> I'll let you plug it in the description if you want. Oh, heck no. <laughs> and then we're going to get the length of that string using the length method. And we're going to store that in a variable called len. And so what I want you to do is I want you to tell me, is the word a short word, which is, you know, between zero and five characters, a long word between five and 10, or a very long word, which is at least 10. One, five. Open bracket. It's the uh, the curly one, so you'll want to hit shift. Yep. Enter. Speaking of shift and enter, did you know that that keyboard shortcut creates a line break in Notion? So let's take a quick line break from coding to talk about Notion, the sponsor of this video. Notion is an excellent all-in-one workspace for taking notes, managing tasks, setting goals, and so much more. It's super customizable, so you can definitely tailor it to your own needs. I personally use Notion to manage my entire YouTube channel, planning videos, keeping track of finances, taking notes from meetings. I also use it to stay organized with school. I keep track of every single thing that I need to do in a given week, like quizzes, assignment deadlines, exam dates. I've also been applying to software engineering internships for the fall and use Notion to keep track of all my applications. I used to use an Excel spreadsheet to keep track of my applications, but I switched over to Notion because it was so much more clean and I liked how it was super easy to filter my applications. All right, let's go into Notion and let me show you my application tracker. So this is my fall 2022 internship application tracker. At the very top here, I have my current resume, a template that I use for my cover letters and a link to my personal website. And then down here is the actual tracker itself. So for every job that I apply to, I put the company, the position, 
the day that I applied, the stage that I'm currently at, the resume I used to apply, and a link to the original job posting. One really great feature about this tracker is that if I click by stage, I can see all the jobs that I applied to separated out by which stage I'm currently at, and it gives me a really nice overview of where I am in the application process. Another thing that I can do is I can filter out my applications to look at just the front-end engineering ones, and I applied to two front-end positions here. Another thing that I can do is filter them by company, so I can look at just my Tesla applications. I applied to three jobs there, all of them. Haven't really heard back yet, it's okay. And adding an application is also really easy. I just found this one job posting today, which I'm gonna apply to after I finish filming this. So I can put in the company name, the position is a software engineering intern, today's date, 18th, and then I'll just leave it as ready to apply for now. I haven't tweaked my resume yet and I can paste a link to the job here. So it's super quick and easy to add a job. This job tracker page has really helped me stay organized with all my applications and honestly made the recruiting process more fun because it's kind of satisfying to look at this really clean page and then update the status of, of my applications anytime something changes. And yeah, that's how I've been using Notion to keep track of my fall 2022 internship applications. You can sign up for Notion using the link in the description. And thank you again to Notion for sponsoring this video. Back to coding. Oh, six, one, ten. So one thing I want to point out is um, it's actually an L, not a capital I. It's like print line. Oh, I already changed it, but oh, yeah, it's like printing the line. So L N. Oh, line. Okay. yeah. I know they look kind of similar. Yeah. If it's not less than five, and if it's not less than ten, does that mean that it's automatically going to be bigger than or equal to ten? Yes. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, that's right. Oh. Really bracket. Yeah. So do you want to try entering some strings and seeing uh, seeing what your code says about it? Yep, that's uh, four, nine? Ten. Wait, it's ten? Nine, nine. <laughs> no, it's nine. Pi is a short string? Yep. <laughs> That's, that's another very long string. It's called the modulus. And what it does is it, uh, it's used for computing the remainder when you divide two numbers. So if I did like 10 modulus like three, if you think about 10 divided by three, the remainder is one, right? How would I check if five is even? I would want the remainder to be zero when I divide by two, right? Num modulus two equal equals zero. Yeah, so we get num is odd. Um, and then if we were to enter in an even number like four, we would get even. Exactly. I could combine it with another condition, right? I could combine it with the condition that the number is bigger than six. But if we entered a number that is both even and bigger than six, for example, like eight, we would get that num is even and num is bigger than six, right? So what I want you to try doing, I want you to tell me if the number is both odd and negative. If num So first you have to think like, how could you use modulus to check if a number is odd? And if you think about odd numbers, like 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, what is the remainder when you divide them by 2? When you divide 3 by 2, the remainder is? 1? Yeah, it's 1. What about when you divide 5 by 2? So it's 1. It is 1. So how do you think we would check if a number is, uh, is odd? Equals, equals one. All right. So that's the first um, check. We also want to check if the number is negative. Is it like this? Yeah, that, uh, that works. 
Okay. What number could we use to get cool as the output? Negative five. Sure. Yeah, and we get not cool. So now we're going to talk about arrays. Have you ever heard of the word arrays? Yes. Oh, really? What, I don't uh, know what it is. So arrays store a group of items that are all the same data type. You could have an array that stores a bunch of integers or a bunch of strings. So here, what I've done is I've created an array of integers called nums, and I'm allocating space for it to have 10 numbers within this array. These numbers have not been set yet, but we're going to do that right now. We're creating a loop that will run this code 10 times. How does it know that it'll run 10 times? It uses this uh, variable, this counter i, which starts at the value of zero, increases by one each time, and then breaks out of the loop once we are no longer less than 10. So you can think of the array as sort of like a list. Um, and there are like a bunch of slots within the list. There's the, zero, there's the first spot, there's the second spot, the third spot, and there's 10 spots in total, right, in our array. So I'm gonna use these square brackets to sort of access these spots. So these spots are called indices. In our nums array, the indices range from zero to nine. So with the second for loop, what I'm doing is I'm looping through the entire array and I'm just printing out what's in the array. So nums i, that's referencing the, uh, the element at index i. i, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah? No. Yeah? Oh. Well, it wouldn't print i, it would just print like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, okay. Let's, uh, let's run it and see what we get. Yeah, so as you can see, it, uh, it printed out the numbers from 0 to 9. <laughs> we printed out the numbers from 0 to 9 in order of like increasing order, right? Do you think you could do the numbers from 9 to 0? No. I'll give you a hint. We don't have to change anything about the array. We would just be changing our for loop. How do you think we could change this so that instead of starting at zero, we can start at nine and then go down to zero. Yep, that's pretty close. When would we want to break out of the loop? Zero. At zero, right? So how could we change this to reflect that? Zero equal to zero. You can try that. If we were to run this, what do you think we would get? Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All right, let's find out. Yeah, nice. So now you've got the numbers counting down instead of counting up. So there's one more thing that I wanna talk about before we do the, uh, the final challenge, and these are called while loops. So with for loops, these are sort of counted, right? We have a counter, we were using i, and so the loop would run a fixed number of times, right? While loops are a little bit different. The structure is sort of like this, where it will run some code as long as this condition is true. So the first time it runs, i would be zero, so zero is less than five, and then it would increase i by one, so now i would be one. And one is less than five, so it would keep running, keep running, keep running. Once i is five, you know, five is no longer less than five, and so this loop would terminate. So let's try running this. Oh, it, uh, it asked you again. Oh. Yes, yeah, we're going on a date. Yep. So uh, yeah, as you can see, uh, yeah, some weird like bug. It, uh, it seems like it just keeps <laughs> asking you until you say yes. Now as your exercise, I want you to ask for a number and keep asking until the number is bigger than 100. You see, I was taught that eight is big is eating the five. No, it's the other way around. It should be like this. No, no. Three, two, one, and action. <laughs> I 
Why was that the funniest part? That wasn't even supposed to be funny. <laughs> so you're telling me I spent all this time coming up with these jokes just for my just just to say action to be the funniest thing? Yeah. <laughs> wow. I'm going to include this in the in the video though. Oh, okay. <laughs> My cheeks. Hurt. What would be the condition that you would want to be true if you were to keep asking them? Uh, like yeah, that? close. Like this. Oh. Yeah, it'll keep asking you to enter a number until, uh, until that number is bigger than 100. Nice. We've made it to the final stage, <laughs> which is a coding problem called FizzBuzz. Have you ever heard of the game FizzBuzz before? No, but I've heard of BuzzFeed. So FizzBuzz is, um, is sort of like a counting game. So your job is to print the numbers from 1 to 100, but instead of printing the numbers, sometimes you'd be printing Fizz, sometimes you'd be printing Buzz or FizzBuzz based on these rules. And so this is what uh, your output should kind of look like. Walk me through what you're thinking. You know that you'd want to print 100 numbers, exactly 100 numbers. You're not going to manually print out 100 different lines. For a loop? Yeah, we could use a for loop. This loop will run 100 times, right? But we want to start at, at 1, right? Mm. And we want to make sure that we, uh, we end off at exactly 100. Yep, yep. That'd be good. Now I'm in my loop. I have i. And I have to ask myself, all right, is it divisible by 3? Is it divisible by 5? Is it divisible by both? Or like none of the above, then you would just print the number. So do you think there's, um, to handle the sum of this logic, can we use something that we learned today? The percentage. Yeah, we can use, uh, the yeah, the percentage. Yeah, the modulus. So what could be like one thing that you that you check for. If it's divisible by three. Yep. How would you check if i is divisible by three? Three? Yep. That uh that would work. Do you think you'd still need this stuff though? No. Print fizz. Yep. Is this good? You tell me. Yes. Oh yes. Copy this. Um. No, this. Yep, that could uh, that could be useful. Um, five. Buzz. And and. Like that. Yep, that's uh, yep, that's how you do and. Um, three. Real buzz fizz. Uh, fizz buzz. <laughs> I was thinking of buzz speed. Fizz bud. Oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep. That's it. <clears throat> what would you be doing in in this case, though? Um. Print number. Do I need a bracket? I mean, yeah. uh, no. Because oh. then that would print print literally n u m rather than the value of the variable. Is this your fizz buzz right here? Yes. All right. Let's try running it and seeing what happens. Do you want to click the run button? So if you recall, it should. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Well, uh, we were using num this whole time. We'll just rename this variable. <laughs> All right. 
Uh, let's scroll to the, to the to the top. So we have one, two, fizz, four, buzz, fizz. So like so far it looks good. But when you get to, if you look at 14, the number after 14 should be 15, right? And should 15, fizz, it should be fizz buzz, right? So what do you it's think? Not. Let's try to imagine that num was 15 and that we were running through this code here. What do you think happened for it to produce fizz instead of fizz buzz? This is before this. Yep. Yep. So how do so you I think? I gotta switch it. Yep. You could, you could do that. All right. So now you can see like there are some fizz buzzes kind of scattered throughout. So let's check. We have one, two, fizz, four, buzz fizz seven eight and then and then now after 14 we have fizz buzz instead of fizz so it looks like uh yeah it looks like this works congratulations mm -hmm. i should go to water now yeah you should <laughs> yeah well i guess i guess that's it for today did you did you have fun coding today yeah I guess so. Well, uh, you know, you solved FizzBuzz, so you can start applying for software engineering internships and, you know, passing those coding interviews. Yeah, we should come over and help me study. Okay, so you made it until the end of the video. I appreciate you for that. But I just wanted to quickly give a shout out to the Nicholas T community Discord server. Yeah, we have a Discord server. It's a pretty fun place. There's a lot of really cool people on it. I'm pretty active on it. We just kind of talk about life, school, career, really anything to be honest. Um, it's a really fun place. You should definitely check it out. Link is in the description. And yeah, thanks for sticking around until the end of the video.